And hey, La Perinos, it is Avi from Of Science and Swords once again. We have just received our first shipment uh, for 2019. It was actually supposed to be our last shipment for 2018, but oops, Melbourne Ports. Anyway, uh, we have just a fantastic new range of Epic Armory weapons today, and I am very, very excited to show them to you. I have not even unboxed these ones yet. Like, we've obviously taken the, the mass load out of the boxes, but they're still all in wraps. I haven't seen these yet other than, you know, photos online. So let's, let's start. Ooh, okay, so I, I actually picked the best one to start with. Because now we have the last of the colored katanas. Uh, feels exactly the same as pretty much all the other uh, katanas, which is, you know, if you like the Epic Army Katana, you're gonna like this. It is die katana length. And now we have oh, the other way around. Ah, go there, go there. We just need one more color and we can complete our Sentai Squad, our Swordcraft Sentai Squad, SCSS. Yeah. Uh, moving on, because Tom is giving me embarrassed looks from behind the camera. He is terribly embarrassed for me. We have the new boarding axe. Oh boy. Okay, so the new Epic Armory axes. Uh, there's like six in total. We haven't received three of them. They're all the Elven designs. Uh, the new Epic Armory axes are meant to be reinforced like the old ones were, so it's coming up, but it's not tearing. That's a good sign. Uh, technical issues, sorry. Um, we had a bit of a problem with the gimbal, so we had to stop suddenly. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, uh, next weapon is the boarding axe. It's pretty much a complementary piece to the standard warhammer. You've got your nice pick side, so only this side you smash, and this side you hack. You know, jump on board some enemy airship, hook your way up, murder the children inside, and away you go with a lifetime supply of steampunk goggles. So, what else? Ooh, ooh, this is another new one. I like this one. This is like a, uh, it's a more elegant weapon from a simpler time. It is just a big wood stick. So, why use the whole quarterstaff when you can just hit them with a shillelagh? Hey! I'm actually, wow, the, the design on it's actually pretty well done. Wood grooves are actually in there, they're not just painted on. And it's got a little bit of leather wrap at the base to give you some grip. Delivers a hit just fine. I'm liking it. It's not terribly well balanced because obviously those are all over the place and there's one coming up out the middle. But you know, like it's pretty much meant to be an orc or a goblin weapon, so whatevs. That's gonna be a good bit of fun. You can live here with the rest of the sticks. Uh, ah, now we get into some of the new maces. These are going to be giving the king mace a run for their money. Honestly, when I first saw the photos on the production whiteboard at Epic Armory, um, I was like, oh yeah, they're going to be about the same size as the Forgotten Dreams Maces. That's a nice complimentary uh, little bit of stuff to add to the range. And then we actually received the boxes. I'm like, is that 24 in that box? And Tom was like, no, just six. I'm like, what? And then we opened the box and it all made sense. Ugh. And we saw how big these were on the inside. Oh, doesn't want to come out. So I mean, like, you don't even, ooh, this, this is, this is going to be the floor mace, yes. Uh, you don't even really need to take them out. Like, right like this, it works pretty cool as like a sci-fi troll, ravager kind of weapon. Like, oh, I pulled a stump out of a ground light pole, and now I can hit things with it. But, you know, like, maybe hold on to those discs. You can use them for a different LARP project or something. Oh. In fact, we are going to do that. We're, we're going to hold on to these discs if customers don't want them. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm just running up through a lot of So the Flower Mace is pretty cool. Uh, historically speaking, you basically used it as a bludgeoning can opener against people uh, inside, you know, really heavy plate armor. You'd hook it into parts uh, that had joins and then you just sort of leave a rope and bash it, the squishy bit on the inside. But as time went on, they ended up becoming ceremonial maces that you now see at the front of parades and allowing you to pass laws in British Parliament. So you know, if you need like a good scepter or a star for your LARP, uh, this is going to be a good one. Uh, the heads on the mace, the little spiky bits, unfortunately do not appear to be reinforced. So if you're intending to use this to try and like hook something, uh, don't, or at least don't ask about a warranty replacement when these little bits uh, end up tearing because it is not designed for that. Uh, historically, yes it was, I know, but LARP, it's foam, don't. In terms of delivering a hit, 
you actually don't even notice it. These just sort of absorb the force and quickly bend out. Um, you know what? Let's pause this video and take a slow-mo of that happening. It's a, uh, uh, you know, pretty decent weapon. It's mostly going to be for looks rather than for heavy combat usage, but there are plenty of LARPs where looks are more important than combat skill. Next up, we've got, uh, we are, well, no, I was about to say we already did the Zephyr Katana. No, this is the Zephyr John, so, you know, you can't have, like, a Sentai squad without their evil Negaverse opposites. Ah. So, Ooh, the Jean's actually got a whole bunch of blue on it. That's pretty cool. Um, and silicon oil inside that particular wrap has gone a bit gross. But, so a lot of people are asking us for an ice sword. Um, mostly uh, Swordcraft Frostguard, who no longer exists. But hey guys, we finally got your ice sword done. Let's just put that over here with the other Jean's. So like I really love the way that you can just change like the uh, like the uh, semiotic idea of what a magic blade is made from just by changing one of the colors. So like blue and black is like oh it's bone it's evil whatever. Whereas sorry white and black. Uh, whereas blue and white you know oh it's ice it's air. So it's amazing how you just change the uh, idea of something by changing a color scheme. So next up we have the hacks. Uh, before I showed you the uh, Warhammer and the boarding axe, and this is what happens when they get together in the weapons case, you close the lid and no one's looking and they make a horrible bastard love child. You've got the hammer on one side, you've got the axe on the other, and you've got the... Oh, that... Hey, that goes all the way through. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, it's got like the, the nice little like patterning there. Um, that sort of looked like a, a nice sort of German Gothic uh, Ritter axe. Hoch Ritter. Yeah, it's wunderbar. Um, for some bizarre reason, you can probably, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the, the tape that actually uh, makes it sort of, you know, hold together seems to be there on the sides. Um, oh no, there's some underneath it as well, that's good. So that's a really, really well reinforced uh, axe slash hammerhead. So this is going to be like your all-purpose weapon if you're in a very, you know, like, kill the greenskins warband. All right, next up, we've got the two more pieces. Uh, there are so many new weapons, you guys. All right, so this one's the steel mace. Uh, good for beating off steel panthers. You were expecting me to break out the song, but we've had too many cease and desist orders. No, we haven't actually had any cease and desist orders over music yet. Uh, but, you know, just Tom gets resentful when I say. It's got an extra bit of cardboard to make the ones. Ooh, we get another wheel. Awesome. I'm wondering what I'm going to be able to use all these wheels for. Something will come to me. Maybe Throwing cart. Sorry? Throwing cart. Throwing cart. Ooh, I like that. Or, um, LARP barbells. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, the steel mace, unfortunately, well, like, I say unfortunately, like, it, it, realistically, it, it's... Totally fine. I was just really expecting it to be just like significantly larger uh, than the Forgotten Dreams one. But what it is, is significantly prettier. Uh, go back on. I'm not going to have space for this on the wall. Uh, maybe we can move the baseball bats. But yeah, so it's sort of like just a classic flange mace. It's got a stabby bit at the end if, you know, your game masters will allow you to thrust with this. Like, realistically, that's what it's for. It's for you know, like just duh, right through the armor. And then you've got your can opening bits. Much like the Fleur Mace, uh, those bits are not, um, you know, reinforced. So don't, don't try hooking with the mace. I mean, like, don't try hooking with a mace in general. But, you know, it should be able to deliver a nice good hit. Yeah. The flanges actually do a really nice job of absorbing the force. So, like, generally speaking, the maces are actually a nicer weapon to hit someone with on field anyway. All right. One more mace. What do we got here? We got the Noble Mace. So, like, if you guys thought the Fleur Mace was fancy before, the photos of the Noble Mace were something else again. So, pomp and circumstance. Oh. Ah. Ah. Come back, Max. Oh, 
Oh. So much excess crap. Ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you could start a religion with this. That is, check, check it out, it's so pretty. So once again, we've got your nice stabby tip at the top of the mace. You know, I haven't tested them yet. No. Yeah, I'd be okay getting stabbed by that. It's got a lot of squish to it. Um, this one's a bit more solid than the others, mostly because those bits are uh, just solid foam. They're not reinforced here again, so like, don't let it get hooked. But otherwise, yeah, you've got a nice, really nice processional mace. So, you know, as uh, we move more towards games where people like to just clobber each other into a fine red mist on the ground, I think these new maces, along with the Great Dwarven Hammer, are going to serve real, real nicely. Um, I actually, I really like this one. I just, I'm thinking I would personally recolor it to have like some blood splatters on it. But that's just me. You know when you like, you've got new stuff and you start fantasizing about what you're going to do? So we've got two more weapons and then we're done. It's a long video. This one's an oldie, but a classic. In fact, they're both oldie classics that have just been a little bit remastered. We now have the Dirk length Celtic Leaf Blade, finally. It's been a little bit time. Oh, there's so much leather wax left on this leather. Ha, oh, that's, okay, so normally the, it's got a real leather grip and normally the leather is, you know, quite good to hold onto, but this one, clearly someone just went overboard on the wax and it's really smooth. Um, so yeah, same Celtic leaf blade as always, just nice and small. You can, you know, sort of use it as a pull out from back shanky dagger if people get too close. For instance, you're using a bow and people get too close and you can't draw on them, pull out your nice little shanky. So this is actually a remake of everybody's favorite, and by favorite I mean cheapest bow, the RFB bow. One of the biggest complaints we had about the RFB bows, um, in fact, pretty much the only real complaint was the fact that they are unfinished. The RFB bows are an unfinished product. You're meant to smooth them, sand them, polish them, decorate them yourself. A lot of people paid no attention to that and then, you know, like they'd use the bow and unfortunately because they were a product you were meant to finish yourself, they often had uh, some fine splinters in them, which would obviously come out to your hand. Now, though, we've got pre-sanded RFB bows. You can still do the rest with wrap or the beads or the feathers, whatever you want to do but they've been smoothed and polished. I can go like that and not worry at all about getting splinters. So, you know, like the fact that I managed to do that so often, uh, not giving a care, and also just quite confidently not getting splinters at all. You know, like you would see me react if I'd gotten one. So yeah, these bows, if you want a nice cheap bow that's lacquered, but you don't want to actually decorate it any further than that, bada bing, bada boom, we've got them in small and medium RFB pre-polished. It's a little bit more expensive, but you know, it's a case of you get what you pay for. So with that being said, let's just quickly string it up, make sure that the lacquer doesn't really affect its draw in any particular way. So down. Okay, so on first pull, I'm hearing a couple of slight Cracky sounds as the lacquer gives way at certain stress points. Um, oh, and I can see a couple of air bubbles forming underneath. But I honestly don't think that's anything to worry about. I mean, like I haven't, you know, done much in the way of archery, but it should be fine. We'll find out as time goes by. Like I said, brand new product. We're still a little bit unsure. Let's see how it goes. Speaking of seeing, we'll see you guys on the battlefield.